you ready to go? I think we are. Hello everyone. We are presenting Tune Tapestry, which is a um, attempt to solve the problem of going into care homes, supported living settings and hearing music that is entirely uh, based in the First or Second World War <laughs> uh, and has no relevance to anyone. Now, if you have a quick think about what music you'd associate with an 80-year-old, with a 70-year-old and with a 65-year-old, curious to see whether you came up <laughs> with those. Because if we take uh, <coughs> music tastes are established at 11, 17 and 22, right. if we do the math, um, 65 is Springsteen uh, at 17, Be 70 is Beatles, and we don't actually, I know I didn't necessarily think of it that way, so the, what we're aiming to do <coughs> is work out how you attach music that is appropriate to an individual that they're likely to have enjoyed through their life, <coughs> and how do we do it? So we started with Berkia, plus 11, 17, 23, and genres they enjoy. We would like to include similar artists they enjoy and important life event dates, such as a wedding or birth, that sort of thing, but we unfortunately had two days, so we haven't. <laughs> so how does the app work? Simply, let's <coughs> uh, Spotify API, searching for specific year, genre, creates a playlist on master Spotify account, populates a playlist with songs, and the playlist can be shared to other devices. The bits at the end are stuff we'd like to include because they do have some really cool recommendation features. But instead, we're going to show you how the app works. And I was hoping we could have a volunteer to see if the app works with them. So can anyone in the audience want to give me their uh, favourite genre and their date of birth? Yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> Let's see how we do. What's your favourite genre? Rock music. Yeah. And mm -hmm. what's your date of birth? And how do I spell Kerry? K E double O R. So we'll generate this, okay. and then okay. when we go on to oh, our script. <laughs> I said you're lost into my account, and I've just given you my notes. <laughs> we we now need to leave for unrelated music, but let's see if these are appropriate sort of music. Have you got you anything that fits? I some of those, yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't be like, oh no, why are they saying that? Well, <laughs> but it wouldn't matter even if it was if you if you recognise yeah. the tracks and we're able to go, I don't like this because so-and-so played it all the time, because we are promoting conversation, we are promoting well-being because we like a song, but also it helps build conversation. It helps if someone is struggling to initiate, because um, suddenly there is a prompt. Staff can open discussion and go, oh, I love this one, or I listened to this when I was... So we promote discussions. We'd love to use recommendations to generate uh, use liked songs, so someone really lights up at a certain song, generate a playlist based on that. We'd love to use the API to specific purposes, uplifting or uh, relaxing, because Spotify does um, have specific variables like danceability that you can use to assign. And we'd also um, would like to specifically do anything like gardening and so on that would use certain notes. Limitations of what we currently have, it runs on a single Spotify account, so the way it would work at the moment in deployment would be the care home would have the Spotify account with the API running, and you just take a tablet round, build the playlists, and then you'd modify them. Because once the playlist is there, they can be modified and used. It's just we can't generate them on multiple things, and that does mean it would have there's some issue with GDPR because every We'd love to include geography, language, and other artists. And also, Spotify's data is based on what is popular at the moment. So we can look at the decade from 1971, but it will be what we like from 1971 and 2023, not what people in 1971 liked. 
So we would be looking to support that data with the billboard. Yes, and that is something we would definitely like to look at. So it should be easy enough that you um, just, because the data just dumps um, 30, uh, 30 tracks in, you could then dump multi, you could just put it in, as long as it was aiming at the same playlist, you could just create a bunch of playlists and then put them in together and then uh, cut them down and modify them. I guess you could look at intersection of multiple. Yes. That would be, the, um, yes, that would be really that, that would be something that would be possible using Spotify's own API. Um, you just didn't have time to program it. Or you can could, you could do stuff like max tempo, min tempo, dance, danceability, I think was one of them, which is kind of weird. Yeah. But you know, there's loads of different vectors that you can use to customize the use of, of what could be the apparent use of the playlist. Um, I really just sort of wanted it to be able to generate those sort of memories for you know people in cut homes, maybe they suffer from dementia. If they have a favorite song that they listen to when they're younger, it just sparks that memory and sparks those conversations that are very important for mental health. You know, we're not solving a major like, war problem or anything, but they're making some people's lives happier, I think. Got to take a question from Anne Harrod, who's working for Social Care Wales, who, good to have a program, um, project definitely relevant to social care. Yeah, it's a, it's a lovely um, idea. I'm So what the, how it currently works is there's a main Spotify account that is free. Uh, anyone who has a Spotify account can then play the songs. It doesn't have to be a play, paid plan at all, so you can just create a bunch of free uh, Spotify accounts. Uh, currently, it is actually live, so you can actually go to the website. As long as you have our, the login information for our page, you can actually, actually go and use it now. Um, so I suppose you could just deploy it on a different server. You'd have to change the... Uh, secret, uh, client secret, the client ID that's used in the API connection, and that's what then dedicates it to that specific Spotify account. So as long as you have someone who is knowledgeable of that, and as long as you have someone who's knowledgeable, knowledgeable of hosting, you can technically put it anywhere. So it would be very much a champion system, I think. Yeah. And uh, just a slight bonus, uh, it is, uh, it should be accessible uh, to screen readers and stuff like that, and it works on the lot. Mark. This is very exciting stuff. Um, <laughs> I want to talk about edge cases that I've just been thinking about. Um, <laughs> have you got an exclusion criteria? The reason I think about that is, let's say, um, Dorothy, who's got advanced dementia, every time Elvis is doing nothing but a hound dog play, she twerks across the hallway and knocks out all the flower pots. <laughs> <laughs> have you thought about maybe we shouldn't play that song for our group? <laughs> the playlists can have tracks deleted as well as that. <laughs> so <laughs> it, it would be yeah, I mean, you know, Spotify has its own user interface and you can just add, delete, modify, change tracks if you want to. But I think the, the aim for this, this is very much like a minimum viable product. You know, it works based on two filtering categories. If you wanted to, you could try and exclude certain variables like artists. The way that Spotify manages artists and tracks as well is using URIs which are basically just jumbled up codes that are assigned to a certain one. So if you have those, you can just lock them, I guess. Maybe, I don't really know what happened to it. Um, but it's something that probably could happen. But I think what we discussed was it's a tool that facilitates conversation, so you should be listening to the person, and you should be listening to the <laughs> sound of crashing. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? Anybody? Well done. Thank you.